All righty. Welcome, welcome. Tuesday crew. If any of you are returning from the last live that we had, welcome back. And if you are new, welcome into the space. This is Wolfpack Chat. We'll be doing this every Tuesday in the month of August. Uh, we're here today to kind of discuss some important things as we return to campus. So today's topics, uh, actually today's topic is, is our, for our Wolfpack Chat will be, campus will look a little different this fall. Here's what you can expect. And the link to the captions is also in the bio. So I'm actually going to pin pin the title in the comment for you here, just in case anybody forgets it. Perfect. There we go. All right. So that title is pinned on the comments as well. So again, welcome to Wolfpack Chat. If you're just entering the space, uh, we are here today to talk about what to what campus will look like when we when we return. It's going to look a little different. And then here's what you can expect. OK, um, so make sure if you haven't shared this with somebody. Uh, send it out so we can make sure we get as many people in as we can. Last week, we had the amazing James Wright from Residential Life. Um, I think we should challenge today to get as many people as we can. And the amount of people we get, that's how many push-ups he has to do. So keep sending this out. Keep pushing it. Uh, welcome to the space. Welcome to Wolfpack Chat. Um, we have some amazing administrators from campus today uh, to give you some information. So our topics today will be surrounded around, around, around how will campus look when you return, uh, what do students need to know about walking around campus, which I think is, is a very important topic, uh, dining on campus, and then lastly, residential life. We know some students are going to be returning to campus and living on campus, and we want to make sure that they have all the information they need to know uh, with, with that as well. So again, if you're just getting here, welcome to Wolfpack Chat. Today is Tuesday, August 18th. We want to make sure we're getting you all as much information as we can. Make sure you share this with some friends. We want to make sure that everybody's getting, remember, James Wright was here last week. We want to get as many people as we can, and we want to make sure that he does the amount of push-ups for how many attendees we have today. So, all right. Thank you all so much for coming into the space today. If you're just joining us, we're going to have some amazing guests today to kind of show us uh, what campus will look like when we return, but then also, too, what to expect. Awesome, awesome. Our first guest is going to be coming in for a minute, so just make sure that you're putting questions in the chat. We have some amazing university employees behind the scene um, answering those questions, but also, too, we're going to try to pull as many from the comments as we can as well. So make sure you're throwing your questions in there. Um, make sure you're sharing this with uh, your peers uh, so we can get all these questions answered before we return to campus next week. I'll be in classes next week, too, so I'm getting, getting anxious but getting excited, but... I do have my mask. I have multiple masks. So make sure you are getting all your masks ready for everything. All righty. So as we wait for our next guest, uh, just make sure you're throwing your comments into the, the chat box there. We want to make sure we get all those questions answered for you. So once again, just so you know, we have uh, another session set for the next week. James Wright from Residential Life, he will return. Um, they're going to be talking about um, ASU and clubs and organizations in the center, every student, every story, and discussing how to get them involved on campus. But today, our main focus and our topic is surrounded around how campus will look when we get back, um, what do students need to know when they're walking around campus, uh, dining on campus, and then lastly, again, residential life. So making sure that um, you get all the, those questions and we can get answered for you today. All righty. Let's see if we can find our guest here. All right, how's everybody doing? Throw in a hashtag, Wolfpack, go pack. We can make sure we get all those questions answered for you today. Nice. Awesome, awesome. Say hello. If you see somebody's name there, you know, say hello. Hashtag go pack. We're going to get our first guest up here with us. Get some answers questions for all of you. Awesome, awesome. Thank you all so much for being here today. We're at we're at a, we're at some viewers. James Wright is going to have to do a ton of push-ups next week, so I'm excited about this. Nice. Hello, everybody. How's everybody doing? Good to see everybody. Thank you all so much for joining today. We really appreciate it. Once again, if you're just coming into the space, uh, we want to make sure that you understand this is our Wolfpack chat session. And we want to make sure that we get all those questions answered for you. Awesome, awesome. All right, we are waiting on our first guest. 
Nice. Thank you. Hi, everybody. How's it going? How's it going? All right. If you're just coming into the space, just a lot, you know, another reminder. Uh, we're Wolfpack chatting today about um, how campus will look when we get when we return. Uh, what do students need to know when they're walking around campus, dining on campus, and also to residential life? Perfect. Some great questions popping up. We just want to make sure we'll get those questions answered. Keep throwing those questions into the chat box. We'll make sure we get those answered for you today. All right, keep keep putting those questions in there. All right, throw into the comments too. We're going to get those questions answered for you, but you can throw some comments in there about what you're looking forward to for the fall semester. Uh, somebody asked if the gym was going to be open. I can personally ask, ask that question. I'm Sheena Harvey, the Associate Director for Fitness and Rec Sports. Um, the fitness center will be open. Um, multiple facilities on campus will be open. So the university has done an amazing job of uh, placing things on <clears throat> the, the campus website uh, for reference to making sure that students have access to that. Um, and then, of course, our amazing administrators on campus uh, willing to answer those questions and help you navigate now that we're in this period of, of COVID to where um, things we have to take more precaution and making sure that we're doing this. Okay. Thank you all so much. Yes. Keep throwing those questions in there. We're going to make sure we get those answered for you. All right. Let's get some, some, some commentary in here about what we're looking forward to coming into the fall semester. Hi, Ke hi Keegan. Hi, Keegan. <laughs> I see Keegan's name. He said, hi, Sheena. All right. So great. We have we have a ton of people coming in still. Uh, we're going to get you some great information today. Um, this Wolfpack chat session today is Tuesday, August 18th, uh, making sure that we're giving you more information about what campus is going to look like when we return, um, what students need to know about walking around campus. I think uh, the university has done a great job of, of marking off areas, uh, keeping those traffic patterns in, in a way that keeping everybody distance and safe and then we know the big one right everybody has to wear their mask as i said before i have my mask i have multiple masks i have my class mask i have my office mask my car mask um, because face coverings and masks are required um, to as we are on campus and we continue to be on campus if you're just coming into the space my name is sheena harvey i'm the associate director for fitness and recreational sports I work within the EO Wigan Fitness Center. So excited to see everyone as they return to campus or even just, you know, if they're going to be doing online classes only, that's great. Uh, we'll have resources available for students all over. Yes. Great. Keep throwing those questions in there. We want to make sure we're getting everybody, everybody situated. Some great questions coming up that we will get answered by our administrators here shortly. Just want to make sure that we are getting set up and all that good stuff. Awesome, keep throwing those questions in there. And remember, if you're just getting on, so our other host on the other the, the other weeks is James Wright. He is in, he's an RD for residential life. And we have, we, I just situated, I situated this bet to where how many ever participants we get today, that's how many push-ups James has to do. So I hope he's watching and I hope he knows that he has some push-ups to do next week. So we're super excited. Um, to have everybody return if you are planning to return to campus. Nice. Keep throwing those comments in there. Nice. Thank you all so much for all the questions. We appreciate it. Nice. Keep keep throwing those questions in there. Thank you so much. If you're just joining us, uh, we are here for Wolfpack Chat, uh, Tuesday, August 18th. Our discussion is surrounded around residential life, dining on campus. Uh, what do st what do students need to know when they're walking around campus? And then also to how will campus look when we return? So we will have one of our guests on here shortly. Nice. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Keep those participants coming in. If you know somebody that needs to know this information, please send them the, the live so they can get on and get that information as well. Nice. 
Thank y'all so much. Thank you for all the questions. We appreciate it. This is a student services led ASUN Instagram live event. Uh, we're hoping that. Um, all right. So we are going to have uh, one of our guests coming in right now. Um, the, the executive director of residential life, um, housing and food services, uh, Dean Kennedy. He's going to give us some great information and actually give us um, an overlook into seeing what some of the spaces look like. Uh, in, the, in the dining area for students that are going to be using that, utilizing that for food services on campus. So we're super excited. All right, let's get them in here right now. Perfect. All right, welcome. Hello, hello. How's it going, Tina? Hi, Dean. How you doing? I'm doing excellent. Thank you. Do you look great in that mask. You look great. <laughs> Thank you. I have one for my car, one for my house, one for my office. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'll intro you. So once again, this is our executive director of residential life and housing and food services, Dean Kennedy. Um, and today he's going to kind of give us a little walkthrough, kind of showing one of the dining, our dining, main dining commons for our students here on campus. So um, make sure you pay attention, throw those questions into the chat. And Dean, it's on you. All right. Thanks, Sheena. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Super excited. Uh, we are welcoming probably about three or 400 students through the check-in process in residence halls. Uh, but we wanted to give you a, a sense as to what the den looks like, which is our all-you-care-to-eat dining facility uh, located really close to uh, most of our residential communities. Um, so with that said, let's get on this tour. Um, so when you come into the den, which is located right across from the Pen and Pen Student Achievement Center, um, please hand sanit use hand sanitizer. Ooh, yummy. All right, let's go. <laughs> So when you arrive, we have a completely contactless uh, way to, to check in to get your food. Um, use your student ID card, swipe in the machine, and you are in. Once you are in, you have access to everything. Let's check out what everything looks like. So for every meal um, on the menu board, you'll be able to see what are the food options that you'll be able to have access to. Um, and as you arrive, uh, please check out the, the yellow paw prints and the white paw prints. Um, that's going to help direct you and make sure you're being socially distant, uh, which is really important. So just as you walk in, on the right-hand side are all of our grab-and-go, like, smaller items. We have fruit cups, milk, yogurt, uh, granola, uh, uh, oatmeal, coffee that is contactless. So you just put your cup up uh, and get a nice cup of coffee. Or Joe, because that's a really, really old person term. Um, Mountain Dew is my favorite, so it happens to be right in the middle of the soda machines. I really appreciate that. Uh, so you grab that, and then you head over to some other stations that we have. So just as you walk in, right, is our salad station. So they have an option to choose from a bunch of different grab-and-go salads. Um, so you grab it, and you go to the next station. Let's go. Here we have La Cucina, um, which is our Italian fair dining location. So pasta, uh, stir fries, uh, so a lot of really cool options uh, in here. Um, and you can see that there's a, uh, a corral that makes sure that you are able to be socially distant while you're in this space. Uh, we have a couple other dining venues to check out with them. We know that a lot of our students come with different dietary restrictions. Um, so we have a specific allergen station. Um, so regardless of the allergies that you have, please um, stop by this station first, uh, check out the different options, make sure you're getting food that you can eat. Um, if for some reason there is food that is here um, that doesn't meet with your dietary needs, please reach out to like one of our Nevada dining staff members um, and we will talk you through like what are the different options available on campus. Uh, but in the den, we have a station specifically for that need. Just next to the Allergen station is um, our home style um, cooking area. So a lot of like really good home cooked foods, uh, comfort foods, if you will. Um, and please know the Allergen station and the comfort food station never uh, touch each other. 
um, so making sure that we're keeping allergies um, away from students that need them. So a couple more stations to check out. So right here we have the grill, which may be kind of a surprise, but has grill items. So hot dogs, hamburgers, fries, um, great food. Um, my experience, uh, students tend to navigate to this station a lot. Um, so maybe you can branch out and maybe go to some of the other stations. Just next to the grill is our deli. So at the deli, we'll have three different sandwiches that again, grab and go. Everything is grab and go. Um, so you can grab your, your sandwich um, and head to wherever you would like. So one of those places is our dining area. So the den has capacity for about 110 individuals to, to hang out and eat. Uh, you'll notice that the tables have only four chairs. Uh, we do that. Uh, the Washoe County Health Department has said that um, no more than six individuals can be eating at a table at a time. Uh, we res we've restricted that a little bit further for the safety of our students. Um, also, the health department says we have to have six feet of distance between tables. Uh, we've chosen seven. Um, so again, it's just another way for, to help our students stay as safe as possible. As you can tell, we're setting up for dinner right now. Mm -hmm. Let's go this way. So as you came in to the den, um, that it's a one-way path of travel. You grab your food, you can hang out and eat, um, and then you head out at our exit. Um, we do have bathrooms in here, so if you need to go to the bathroom, you can do that and come back and get your food. Uh, but otherwise, it's really designed for a, a one-way uh, for our students to be able to grab their food and go. Awesome. I think that's Thank all you. I have at this point. Um, we're going to go, like, stand out of everybody's way. Um, so, so, you know, I think you have some questions for me. I do. I do. And as you walk to your, your, your spot so I can grill you with some questions, um, just if you're just joining us just right now, we are doing our Wolf Pack chat on this Tuesday, August 18th. Um, and what we're going over right now with the Executive Director of Residential Life, Housing, and Food Services, Dean Kennedy, um, is, is dining on campus, the dining common area. And, and thank you so much, Dean, for showing showing us, you know, what it what it's going to be like kind of navigating through um, so students can get their meals and get their nutrients that they need um, throughout the day. So I know yeah. a lot of students will really be very appreciative um, of that as well. So, yes, I do have some questions for you. So uh, what do students more so need to be aware of when it comes to uh, the food services this semester? Yeah, no, thank you. So I would say the, the first thing as students are looking at their class schedule, um, club and organization meetings, whether it's virtual or in person, um, think about the different dining venues that are around where you're at. So okay. uh, Nevada Dining has eight dining venues like across campus, um, and there are several dining options in the Joe Crowley Student Union. Um, so there's a, definitely a bunch of places to eat, um, but think about where your classes and commitments and work are. Um, so that you can plan into your route throughout the day, like where you're going to go eat. Um, mm -hmm. Also, to be aware, like all of our stations are grab and go. So regardless of the, the venue across campus or the, the venues that are in here that I just talked through, um, there are prepackaged food um, that have been prepared by our Nevada dining team um, who are fantastic. Um, they follow the, the strictest guidelines for, for health and safety related to food. Uh, they've implemented CDC recommendations regarding food handling. Um, so all that food is good to go. Um, in the den is the only place on campus uh, where you get the, the food that you can potentially like made to order-ish. Um, so you get options for the salad bar, um, options for the deli. Um, okay. So other dining locations are just like small grab and go. Okay. Uh, as you think about the, the grab and go options, um, probably one of the next questions is where do you go to eat? Um, so as, as you think about like being aware of where you can go on campus, um, academic buildings, um, your residence hall. If you live on campus, you can eat your, your residence hall room. Um, really, as, as long as you're being socially distant from other students, um, you can eat um, elsewhere on campus. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, Dean, for that. Um, that is, a, well, I think, one of the most important questions of today, the students knowing. Uh, what form of the payment will be accepted for food services? Yeah, great question, Sheena. Uh, my recommendation um, is to use your food bucks and wolf bucks. Um, so your ID card, your student ID card that every student has to have, um, you can load food bucks onto here. Really easy to do that. Um, food bucks are good in any of the dining venues um, on campus. 
Um, and then Wolf Bucks, you can use in the bookstore as well. Um, okay. But all the dining venues take books. Um, if you do have cash and want to use cash, you can go to the Overlook or Habit Burger. Both of those venues take cash. Um, but the rest, um, I would really rely on your ID card. And really, you're just carrying one thing around. You have to carry your ID anyway um, right. as a student. So just load the money on here, and that way it makes it really easy um, all over campus. Right, great point made. Students, make sure you have your ID on you at all times when you're on campus. You need it for multiple services on campus. So Dean, kind of moving forward here, how do you eat and drink with the mask on? Basic uh, question, right? <laughs> uh, well, with a lot of ingenuity, some creativity. Uh, no, so, um, so on campus, masks are required whether you're inside or outside, and that is for the safety of our entire community. Most importantly, you. Um, whether you're a student or a guest, um, when you come into the den, which is our all you care to eat dining facility. Um, you should have your mask on while you're standing in line, grabbing your food. When you sit down and you're actually partaking of food or drink, there's a straw, imagine a straw. Um, like that is when you take your mask off. Mm -hmm. If you need to get a refill, it's really important to put that mask back on, um, get back in line if there's a line, grab what you need, sit back down, um, take your mask off and, and eat or drink. Um, and that is really the case across campus. Uh, there, there will be um, designated locations where people can eat outside. Um, okay. Like, you should have your mask on, but if you're eating or drinking, you need to take your mask off, because otherwise that's just messy. Okay. It is. I'm trying to make sure I remember to take my mask off when it's time to eat. All righty. So you did mention there's multiple venues and such that were students, so hopefully they're making plans to know when they get out of class or out of work, they know where they can go get food. Um, will everything be open, or are there some things that will not be open? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so we've done a lot of work over the past few weeks as we're learning more about how many students are going to be on campus. That means like that also impacts the number of faculty and staff that will be on campus. So we've had to make some hard decisions and two of our locations will not be open. Um, so that's the Bites Cafe and Elements. Um, mm -hmm. As we looked at the entire campus, we wanted to make sure that there was food available where students were at, where their classes were at, um, just to start out the semester. If okay. we're finding that foot traffic increases in different areas around campus, like we have the ability to open venues, um, increase hours, or if we're finding that foot traffic is falling, we may have to reduce some of that, but that is not our hope. Okay, perfect. Um, will there be, how does mobile ordering and grab and go pick up work? Yeah, thank you. Um, so every student have, has access to the Boost mobile app. Um, so if you just search UNR Boost, uh, you'll come right up to it. So you'll be able to order your food um, from your phone um, to the location that you want. Um, the only places that don't accept booths are the Den, which is where we are okay. at, um, and Bowl Life. And that's one of our new dining venues that's coming online. Hopefully, we'll be able to get them onto the Boost app. Um, right. But we don't do that here because of the, the, the environment of which it is. Um, but all the other dining venues, you order it on your Boost app. You pay with Wolf Bucks or Dining Bucks. Or, sorry, uh, Wolf Bucks or <laughs> Food Bucks um, or credit card, if you'd like. And then um, you go to that location, and there's a designated pickup station. Um, you'll scan um, at that station, grab your food, and then you're good to go. Right. Now, I'm getting hungry, so we're going to shift questions a little bit to, <laughs> to, to more to housing here now. So how will move-in work for socially distanced perspectives, and then what do students and their families need to know for move-in? Yeah. No, thank you. So the, uh, we're moving people in today. Um, super exciting. So what, what people need to know um, is that when you arrive on campus, please be aware Virginia Street, which is the main artery through campus, um, looks like a construction zone because it is. Okay. Um, so there's lots of cones. So we have signs all over the place. If you go to our um, website um, and type in move in, um, like that has specific directions of how to get to each hall. So please be prepared for the construction on Virginia Street. Um, oh, yeah. unfortunate and out of our control. Um, when you arrive, uh, you'll check in. Uh, every student was able to sign up for a designated check-in time. Uh, please show up during that time. We've had some students that have arrived outside of that time and that is causing longer waits. Um, so we've also uh, shared a message with, with students um, really to have as few helpers as possible. Um, our preference is one individual and a student. 
um, which is really challenging because we know like families want to send their students off to college and move them into a residence hall. Um, so our staff is being as flexible as possible um, if a student is bringing more uh, family members or guests to help them move in. Uh, but please know if there's a lot of people, a lot of foot traffic, we're going to have to limit it to just one person. Um, okay. And that is all about, as I talk through food, um, it's all about keeping our students safe mm -hmm. and family members and guests safe, um, as well as our staff. Right. Um, so other things to, to be aware of for move-in, um, it's a designated check-in window, so an hour. Um, cool. We're not expecting people to move in in that hour, um, unless you're really fast and really strong and maybe you can do it. <laughs> Um, but it's really about checking in, and the check-in process is completely contactless. Um, so you check into your building, um, you'll get a, a link where you'll fill out some paperwork, virtual paperwork, um, and then you can move in. Uh, really important to take as little time as possible to unload your vehicle, mm -hmm. knowing that you have plenty of time to move in to your room right. a little bit later. So that allows us uh, to make sure that like vehicles are moving to longer-term parking, so the next hour's shift of students can come in and unload their belongings. Perfect, thank you so much, Dean. I know that's probably one of the bigger questions too of, uh, you know, like you said, moving in is kind of a family thing. I remember moving into the residential halls when I was a freshman, that was a long time ago though. All right, so it's kind of moving forward here too. So how will the halls look different this semester? Yeah, that, that, great question, uh, something <laughs> we've been working on for the Actually, a lot of good questions. Um, something we've been working on for the past several months. Um, so we've reduced the, the number of lounge furniture um, so that we can maximize social distancing. Um, all of our front desks have glass barriers, um, which are more protecting uh, for both the, the student and our staff um, and easier to clean. Um, hand sanitizer stations, like at all the front entrances. Um, we only have single and double rooms, like throughout our inventory. So no triples or quads. Um, uh, at the beginning of the year, we're we're likely going to keep our community rooms locked, um, so it's not for students. So students aren't able to access those. Um, as we move into the semester, if we feel we can open those and still have safety um, and health for our students, then we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, I think those are those are some of the big things that we're doing. Okay, and before I one more before, one more question for you, Dean. I just want to those just coming to the space. Uh, we are with uh, Dean Kennedy. He is the executive. Um, Director of Residential Life, Housing, and Food Services. So giving us some great information about, um, you know, food services on campus, residential life, housing, and such. Um, so make sure that if you are just getting on, put your comments in the box. We want to make sure that we're getting those questions answered. We have a ton of amazing UNR faculty, Nevada faculty behind the scenes, making sure to get all those questions answered. So, Dean, I have one more for you, if you're ready for it, okay? Bring it. All right, where and how will resident hall students be quarantined if need be? Yeah, uh, I was gonna say that's a great question, but like that's kind of, I don't know, old. Uh, yeah, so in every community, um, so let me start back. So we have 200 mm -hmm. bed spaces across our entire inventory that we've allocated as sicker quarantine. So in, in every community on every floor, we have what we're calling a sick room or a suite. Um, so that way if somebody is feeling a little bit under the weather, um, they have the ability to go to a, uh, a room or a suite that is in their community uh, while they're waiting to work with the student health center to get tested for COVID um, or if they're getting other medicine. Um, if somebody is diagnosed or tested positive for COVID, um, the first thing we're going to ask them to do is to go home. Um, either apartment, family, off campus, home if that's possible, um, because we know that people recover better in a quiet environment and a home environment is a little bit more quiet uh, mm -hmm. than 2,400 of your closest friends living next to you. However, if students can't go home, uh, they live too far away, um, transportation is not available, um, home is not safe, um, they just need to let our staff know and they'll be relocated to one of our residence halls. Uh, we have an entire floor that is designated as a quarantine floor um, that will allow students to, to be in that space rest and recover. Um, and whether somebody is in a sick room in their community or a quarantine floor, uh, we will work with Nevada Dining to make sure that they have food. Uh, okay. So we have a delivery schedule set up uh, to make sure that those students are obviously well nourished like, as they're recovering. Uh, we also have a phenomenal custodial team uh, that will be disinfecting the spaces throughout like all of our buildings on a regular basis. Um, and in particular, if somebody is in a sick 
Groom. Ter terrible name. Terrible name. Um, somebody has something better, please let us know. I've been saying that all summer. Nobody's had, <laughs> nobody's had a better name. Uh, um, but uh, like outside of our, our sick rooms and then on our quarantine floor, um, at least twice a day, if not more, we'll be using electrostatic guns. Okay. Um, what that is, it basically supercharges disinfectant um, to really small particles and in a space, uh, basically it attaches to walls, carpet. Um, if it's done in a, somebody's room, technology, books, um, it is completely safe, does not harm um, paper per books, it does not harm technology. Uh, it evaporates really fast, but it's, it's tested to, to kill the, the um, COVID. Um, okay. so we'll be doing that on a regular basis, um, doing whatever we can to keep our community safe. All righty. Well, Dean, thank you so much for all of your, your, your help with explaining and showing, uh, you know, what it's going to look like in the dining common areas. And of course, uh, those, those questions about how it's going to be living on campus as well, too. So we really appreciate your time. I know you're busy. And if you want to, you can grab me like two cookies from the, the dining con chocolate chip and peanut butter. If you have it, let me know. Um, and I'll, I'll come, do. I'll come get that from you with my mask on. So <laughs> thank you so much, Dean. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Have a good one. All righty. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. All righty. Thank y'all so much for, for staying tuned in. Uh, once again, we're here with Wolfpack chat. This is our, this is our Tuesday thing for August. Uh, we're making sure that we're giving information just about, um, just important things to know before returning to campus. Um, you know, today our, our big focus is on campus, um, what campus will look like, and, you know, when you return this fall, and then here's what you can expect. Uh, so we just had some amazing information from Dean Kennedy uh, over at Residential Life and Housing and Food Services. Uh, very important for those students who will be living on campus, and also, too, just to know where to get food and such and things like that. Um, yes, yeah, so just make sure that you're putting more questions into the chat. Like I said, we have an amazing uh, university staff. Uh, support behind us, uh, making sure that we get all those questions answered for you. Um, and then also to throw in there, you know, hashtag pack, go pack, getting ready for the semester. I know I'm enrolled in two classes, uh, so I'm getting ready to go in ready for that statistics. So um, root for me as well as I'm rooting for you, all, all you students, amazing students out there. Um, but yeah, just make sure that you um, are tuning in next Tuesday as well to James Wright from Residential Life. Uh, he will be back, and he will be um, uh, speaking with some representatives from ASU and clubs and organizations, the center, every student, every story, um, but then also, to discussing how to get involved on campus. So I'm going to welcome our next guest in here, and we are going to get it going and get some more questions answered um, for all of you. So thank you all so much for being here today. We really do appreciate it. Um, and then, like I said, just make sure we're getting those questions in for you. All righty. Hello, hey. Melissa. How are you? I finally got in. Sorry, everybody. I uh, had some technical difficulties no. at the beginning. So, so good. So good. So good to see your face. Um, I'm kind of having a little problem of hearing you. I'm not okay. sure if it's on my side or your side, but I'll get closer too, so we can make sure we hear each other. Okay. All right. So we oh, have nice. here with us today. Um, we have the Director of Planning and Business Services, Melissa Rutter. She's from U University Facility Services, and they've been working extremely hard, y'all, just to make sure that campus is ready for you when you return. And then today, what Melissa will be covering for us, just some um, information about how to get around campus. You know, we have a, our walkways and our signage that are going to be very important to pay attention to. Um, cleaning equipment in the classrooms, which most of us will be turning to the classroom space. And then, of course, the nitty gritty part, right? So restrooms, elevators, stairwells, water fountains, all the functioning things that we need to strive to, so, you know, survive the campus semester. So, Melissa, we're so honored to have you here. Um, so, yeah, uh, would you, I have some questions for you if you just want to jump right into those, or do you want to kind of give a little overview um, uh, from your, your department? I, I think the thing that I want to stress as I go over things is that this is all about you as students and faculty and everybody watching this, embracing all the things that we've put in place, because we can't do it without you embracing them. So as I talk about things, I'm hoping that you're going to buy in and we're going to be doing not only some practical things, but some fun things. So yep. go ahead and ask away. All right. So first question. So how is campus going to look different? Can you just break that down for us? Well, the big thing is we have a new building, right? 
building. Yes. <laughs> An engineering building is opening. We're really excited about that. Um, but you're probably more talking about what's going on COVID-wise. Um, we're going to have a lot of signs on campus. You're going to see signs all over the place telling you to wash your hands, telling you to social distance, wear <laughs> your mask. Yes. All those are really important. And there are going to be some CDC signs and there'll be some flags and banners. So hopefully it'll be a little visually exciting. But if you are not knowing where to go or what to do, look around. There's probably a sign that'll help. <laughs> <Yes. you. laughs> Ton of signs. Yeah. Are you hearing me okay now? Uh, yeah, I can hear you a little bit better. Yes. Okay. Um, the other thing you're going to see as you travel around campus are divided sidewalks. We're trying to make people walk on sidewalks, or we're asking you to, like you drive on a roadway. So you stay on the right side, especially the wide sidewalks. And we have some areas that are one way. And I'll talk about that, I think, a little bit more as you ask questions. Okay. We have social circles being painted on the lawns. Nice. So there will be 14 of them in front of the Knowledge Center, 14 on the quad, and seven in front of Mac Social Science. And we want students to use it. And if they are using it, we can paint more. So we'll awesome. see how that goes. And then you're going to be seeing paw prints <laughs> all over the place to help guide you. So those are some things that are going to look different. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. I know it, it's exciting that we're um, still allowing that, that, you know, we're social distancing, but we're creating still these spaces for students to, to socially integrate. So I think the, the social circles, I think that's an amazing idea. I would have never thought of that. All righty. So kind of moving forward in questions here for you, Melissa. So I heard you can catch COVID-19 through central air conditioning units. Is that true? And then if so, what are you doing to better filter in our classroom spaces? So there are a lot of concerns out in the media about uh, central air and air conditioning and HVAC systems. We're turning to the experts in that field and we're following their guidance. The big thing we're doing is we're maximizing the outside air that's being brought into the rooms. Okay. And there is a side effect to that that everybody needs to be prepared for. And that side effect is if it's really, really hot outside and we're bringing in as much of that outside air as we can, mm -hmm. the air conditioning isn't going to keep up. Right. So be prepared. Classes might be a little warm as we're starting the season off. And as it gets colder, you might find it's a little cold and you want to have a sweater or a jacket available okay. to you in the classroom. The other thing that we're doing is – all of our, H our heating and air conditioning systems, our HVAC systems, mm -hmm. okay. have filters. And we are increasing the filter efficiency. There's a rating that's a minimum efficiency reporting value. It's called a MERV rating. And okay. we're moving from a MERV 8 to a MERV 11, wherever we can. And what that means is it traps smaller particles. Than okay, okay. So we're, we're trying to filter the air better. We're bringing, out the out, bringing in the outside air to maximize that. But again, it sort of comes back to you. You need to be wearing your mask in the classroom and social mm -hmm. distancing because okay. those are part of it also. Got to follow the rules so we can make sure we keep everybody safe. I love that. Yes. Alrighty, for just joining us, again, we are with uh, Director of Planning and Business Services, Melissa Rudder. She is from Amazing Facility, uh, University of Facility Services. I know I put in a lot of work orders. I apologize for that. It's the fitness center. Sorry about that. Um, but moving on kind of to the next question. Uh, so will students be provided with all the cl cleaning equipment needed to wipe down their computers, class spaces, and then are there wipes, cleaning equipment across campus as well, too? We have been working really hard on that. The disinfecting wipes and the hand sanitizer are just really hard to get nationwide. There's a shortage. So what we have going on is each classroom is going to have a disinfecting station. They're arriving Thursday. We're going to have people working overtime to get them mm -hmm. installed. And also each classroom will have a hand sanitizing station. 
So okay. at the beginning, there's only one in each class. Okay. Building, the main building entrance will also have a hand sanitizing station. So you'll be able to use those in classrooms, but you might want to bring personal wipes and hand sanitizers okay. as well for areas when you're studying outside of a classroom. Okay. I know that ASUN is providing some hand sanitizing and other goodies in a bag for um, the first year students. Oh, awesome. That's, That's so cool. awesome. Yes. Yeah. So, no, thank you so much. It, it takes me back to the, the earlier days in school of having all the supplies just ready in your, in your bag. So, um, great note to take. So those of you watching, uh, make sure you're throwing your comments in the box. We have amazing uh, university employees, staff behind the scenes answering questions for us. But um, what Melissa just stated, just making sure that we are providing here on campus uh, those basic needs to keep everybody safe and keep everything clean. But it doesn't hurt to have your own. Um, so if you're going to be maneuvering around campus and such like that. So thank you so much for that. All righty. So the question of the day, I think, what if I forget my mask at home? Oh my gosh, <laughs> you got your mask home, embarrassing. <laughs> not me, not me. Not you, not, not me either, not me. <laughs> so first year students are going to be provided with this care package that I talked about that will have a mask, it's gonna have lip balm, hand sanitizer, even a personal cutlery set for eating. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it also, it also will have a barcode inside it that you can scan to learn how to wear your mask properly. Right. <laughs> so that's important. Residence halls will have masks available if you're living there. Okay. ASUN is going to have tables across campus the first day of instruction where they're going to distribute masks. Okay. And instructors will have masks available in classrooms. So nice. I really haven't asked what answered what to do if you forget <laughs> it. Right. More, I've told you, we're going to be providing a lot of avenues that first day or so for it. Right. Ongoing, you really need to be putting your mask in a place where you're not going to forget it. Just like right. you with your keys or your phone or your books, you know, maybe your book pack, uh, backpack needs to have an extra mask in it. Stash some in a few places because you really shouldn't be stepping on our UNR campus without right. a mask already in place. So stash them, keep them handy, attach them to your mm. backpack. Those are my suggestions. I like that answer. I put my mask on in the car because that's yes. I'm getting ready, getting ready for it. So Absolutely. that was great. Thank you so much. So. And kind of thinking about some of the other facilities and kind of areas on campus, will restrooms be open across campus? And if so, will they be cleaned regularly? Yes, the restrooms are going to be open and they are going to be cleaned twice a day. Okay. So I suggest washing your hands, certainly after using the restroom, but it wouldn't hurt right. to sanitize your hands before so that you keep things clean as you're going in and out. Um, so that's what we have planned twice a day. Perfect. Thank you. So if you're just joining us, we are here with Wolfpack Chat with Melissa Rutter from University Facility Services. And we are getting down to the nitty gritty of what it's going to be like just being on campus. We're talking about getting around campus, making sure you pay attention to the signage and the walkways. A lot of paw prints around. We're the Wolfpack. So pay attention to the, to the paw prints um, in that classroom space. There they are. Um, cleaning equipment in the classrooms, making sure that you understand uh, what the restroom facilities are going to be like, elevator, stairwells, and water fountains. So kind of moving forward, um, asking additional questions. So are face coverings required on inside and outside? I know you said as soon as we step on campus, yes. I think I, you know, so just want to get some, some d definitive clarification on when do you have to have your mask on? Is it just inside, outside certain areas, or... Oh. <laughs> you need you need to wear your mask all the time mm -hmm. unless you're eating or drinking. Okay. And if you're eating or drinking, we ask you to sp uh, to pay some special close attention to social distancing. Right. Because we all like to gather while we eat, but if mm -hmm. your mask is off and you're right. eating and you're talking while you're eating, you have already created a situation where we're not following the rules. 
So if you want to talk to your friends while you eat, go out in those lawn circles <laughs> and sit far apart. And uh -huh. you can eat there with your mask off. You can eat in, in the dining uh, halls and locations. I'm sure Dean went over that. And mm -hmm, he did. In your, in your room in the residence hall. But uh, yeah, wear your mask inside and outside. In fact, we're going to have stickers for your water <laughs> bottles. And they're going to have this cute little poem on it that says, over the mouth, over the nose, <laughs> indoors or outdoors, wherever you go. Nice. So I think this is going to be a reverse image, but it's just a poem with a mask at the top. So Not, how do I get one? Do I, do I get one? Do I get one of those? Well, we have ordered 5,000 <laughs> of them, and they are going to be, I think, around campus that first week. We're hoping that they will be available the first day. But we only ordered them last week, so we're rushing okay. to get it done. <laughs> but we we will get them out there where people can pick up stickers, and we will order more if people like them. That is so awesome. I like that poem is awesome. It's it's easy to remember. So hopefully everybody remembers that. Yeah. Alrighty. So are fill stations and water fountains open? So I know a lot of students on campus have the water bottles. You know, being you know kind to our environment, making sure to use the reusable ones. Um, so could you get some information about that? I can. Yes, we recommend that you use hand sanitizer of some sort before and after using a fill station. And we recommend okay. the fill station for okay. a water bottle of your own rather than okay. using the drinking fountain. Okay. So, um, you know, put, put the poem on your water bottle and go to a fill station and fill yeah. your bottle up and stay hydrated. We live in the desert. Hydration is important. Very important, very important. I have mine right here. <laughs> Perfect. All righty. So how are, how are desks being marked in the classrooms for social distancing? So we talked about the, the handy-dandy paw prints. Are those as well being used for the desk? They are. Now, we don't have any space on campus that's just extra, so we can't remove the extra furniture from classrooms. Okay. So all the desks that are normally there are going to be there. What we've done is we have gone in and we have put some marks on the floor so you can tell where your desk is supposed to be located if it's okay. a movable piece of furniture. Because, you know, they shift. You, you get them out of place. So put them back where they go, and you should be sitting where there's a paw print on your desk. Alrighty, so we are coming towards the end of time. So I have one more question for you. And I think this one is, is somewhat important as well, too. So will elevators be open? If, and if so, if there is a max capacity per elevator? Because I know we have a lot of elevators on campus. We have some, some tall buildings. So what's, what's the scoop on elevators? So I have a quick reply to this, and, <laughs> and that is elevators are going to be open. And we ask you to take personal responsibility for staying socially distant. If it's an elevator where you clearly cannot maintain six feet of separation, one person at a time, but we're leaving that to your judgment. We have not posted signs telling you how many people fit. So okay. exercise, you know, that arm, arm length away between right. you and the other person. Okay. Well, Melissa, thank you so much for all the amazing information about how to be ready to read signs and to be ready to, to navigate campus. We really appreciate your time and the work of your department and all the hard work that's going into getting us ready for the fall semester. So it's good seeing you. Hope you have a great rest of the week and I'll see you sometime next week, hopefully, in a mask. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. All righty. So once again, all, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we just want to make sure that everyone had a pretty decent understanding of uh, what um, campus will look like, you know, this fall semester and then what to expect. Um, so, you know, the behind the scenes crew, I think they did an amazing job solving some of the questions being answered in the chat. Uh, we want to make sure that um, everyone has that open information. Uh, be sure to join us next week. Uh, the topic will be surrounded around um, ASU and clubs and organizations. Um, the center, every student, every story will be uh, present on as well, too, and, and telling students that they can still get involved on campus. So we are super excited to keep these going again.
I'm Sheena Harvey. I'm Associate Director for Fitness and Recreational Sports. Uh, next week, you will have the amazing James Wright from Residential Life, Housing and Food Services. And we are so excited to welcome everybody back to campus. So wishing everybody a great, great rest of the day and rest of the week. See you. See you soon.